North Korea topping the agenda, as John just laid out during this trip, President Trump delivered a hugely consequential speech before the South Korean National Assembly in Seoul last night. He delivered some of his strongest words yet for the rogue regime. Watch this. Today, I hope I speak not only for our countries, but for all civilized nations. When I say to the North, do not underestimate us and do not try us. We will defend our common security, our shared prosperity, and our sacred liberty. We will not permit America or our allies to be blackmailed or attacked. We will not allow American cities to be threatened with destruction. We will not be intimidated. The weapons you are acquiring are not making you safer. They are putting your regime in grave danger. Every step you take down this dark path increases the peril you face. Not a lot of wiggle room there. Fascinating speech last night. Mark Thiessen, American Enterprise Institute scholar and was chief speechwriter under President George W. Bush. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Waltz is a former Green Beret commander and former counterterrorism advisor to Vice President Cheney. Both are Fox News contributors. Gentlemen, welcome. Good to see you both tonight. Uh, Thanks Mark, to be with you. You know, the, the words, the language of that speech, very forceful. Um, President Trump the other day suggested that North Korea come to the table, that, that it was time to talk. So what do you make of this sort of, you know, one-two punch that he's giving them? Well, it's, first of all, it was a terrific speech. It was a forceful speech. It was a Reagan-esque speech. Um, and it was the, the, if there's going to be a diplomatic solution, North Korea has to believe that the military option is on the table. So what I think President Trump was trying to do was make very, very clear last night that he is willing to take military action against the North Korean regime. The problem is the North Koreans really don't believe it. And it's going to take not just words, but actions to make them, to disabuse them of the notion that they're, that they're untouchable. Um, and I think President Trump Trump has a model for what to do, uh, and it's in his, it's what he did a few months into his presidency in Syria after the Syrian regime. Uh, violated once again uh, Barack Obama's red line on not using chemical weapons after repeatedly doing so. It took him about a, uh, less than two days to launch a military strike on the base that had that had launched that chemical attack. And that sent a signal to the Assad regime, you are not going to do that again, or you're going to face even worse. Yeah. And I think Donald Trump has to send a similar signal to the North Korean regime. He has to say to the North Koreans, your days of testing nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles are over. I am declaring North Korea a no fly zone for ballistic missiles and a no test zone for nuclear weapons. And if you try to test them, we're going to take them out. Period. Yes. So, so basically, Mark is saying that the president needs to put down a red line, uh, Colonel Waltz. And if it's stepped over, there has to be a military response. What do you say? Well, I think that's that's absolutely right. And Martha, just to just to take a moment, uh, this is such a hugely consequential meeting here with President Z. The North Korean issue that Mark was just talking to is absolutely the media issue and they have to believe, the North Koreans and the Chinese have to believe that either China will take care of this problem or we will. And I think President Trump is on the path to make them believe this. But the long-term problem, the truly strategic issue here is President Z believing that he is now the United States is equal in terms of a world superpower and he just laid out if you read his speech in the 19th uh, Communist Party Congress the path to actually exceed the United States and if you look at their actions from gobbling up natural resources around the world currency manipulation cyber attacks the theft of our IP we become accustomed in the United States to dominating space air and sea the Chinese are on the precipice of challenging us and taking a lead because of the theft of our, our technological edge over the last 20 years. So President Trump has to push back. I think President he knows President Z will respect strength. Uh, he will also respect, as uh, President Obama never fully figured out, a personal relationship between the two leaders. So there is so much at stake here for the United States as a leader of the free world. I just can't underscore how consequential this, this summit is going to be. Mark, what do you think about that? Um, the argument that China has an edge in a lot of ways uh, and that we've allowed that to happen over the last, I don't know, probably 25 years, right? Right. 
Absolutely. And look, I mean, Brett played it in the, at the end of his show. It was just China, 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 China from the, during the campaign. But what President Trump has done is he's put those issues not on the back burner so much, but he's de-emphasized them because he's trying to use that as leverage with the Chinese to get them to do take some serious action on, on North Korea. And this is another thing that he's trying to get. He's not just targeting Kim Jong-un when he says these things. He's also targeting the leadership in Beijing because I don't think they believe that he's willing to take military action. And so I think he needs to reset their expectations in Beijing on this trip that, yes, he really is willing to take out a, new, a, a North Korean missile and he's willing to stop to take out a North Korean nuclear test site. Um, and it'll be limited to that uh, only because if, it, if the North Koreans don't retaliate, just like the Syrians didn't retaliate, yeah. then then uh, then that'll be it. Well, but this is a president who prides himself on uh, expectations. Is he, uh, and his ability to negotiate. Yeah. And the conversation that he's about to have in about two hours from now with this president is, as you say, just hugely consequential uh, and fascinating. We'd like to be a fly on the wall. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Good to see you both. All right. Thanks, Martha.